The unfolding of the Word of God gives light and understanding to the simple. Join us as we listen to the Word of God from our Father, the presiding pastor of Trinity Household of Faith, Reverend Ebenezer Olawu. Galatians chapter 3. We're going to read verse 3 downwards of it until I tell you to stop. We go. Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Okay, we're going to stop. Let's take it again. Let's take it from verse 1. Let's take it from verse 1. I'm sorry. Let's go. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now being made perfect out of flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the Lord or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are faith are sons of Abraham. Let's stop here. Amen. Lord, the entrance of your word gives light. It brings understanding to the simple. I am pleading this morning that you will send us light through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. We're going to move very fast. Sometimes I was in a journey and right in my hotel room. I had so many things to do. My laptop was with me and I, I planned that when I just settled in the hotel room, I'm going to continue with my work. Lo and behold, that night, I tried to plug in the, my charger, the charger of my laptop. And I discovered that it could not enter into the floor, into the socket, into the socket on the world, the electric socket. I discovered that the socket is quite different from, it does not suit the kind of charger plug that I have. I tried that night to see if I could get anyone from any store because I got there late. It was not possible. What happened? I had a very good laptop. Everything I needed to do, that laptop could do great work for me. But unfortunately, the, the problem was not that there was no power. There was power. There was electricity in the socket. But I could not connect to it. So the problem was not that, oh, the power holding did not release electricity. There was no power there, or there was something in the generating station. There was no power. There was power right there. My, there was no problem with my laptop. My laptop was good. There, my laptop could perform any work that I needed to do that night, but there was a problem. I could not connect to the source. I had the laptop. There was power right in the socket, but there was no connection. Faith is a connector to the source of power. Faith connects you to God's power, to God's storehouse. Faith connects you to God's storehouse. Faith is a conduct pipe that connects you to grace. It connects you to God's provision of grace. Faith connects you to God's provision of grace. Grace, faith rather, is the outstretched arm that receives what God has provided in grace. Grace connects you to God's provision of grace. Faith connects you to God's provision of grace. Grace is the, faith rather, is the outstretched arm that receives what God has provided 
in his grace. Faith is the outstretched arm. The arm that is stretched forth to receive what God has provided in his grace. What has he provided for you in his grace? He has provided healing for you in his grace. He has provided pro all that you need, the physical needs in his grace. He has provided the peace you need in his grace. He has provided the money you need in his grace. He has provided the safety you need in his grace. He has provided the joy you need in his grace. He has provided the deliverance you need in his grace. He has provided the blissful home you need in his grace. Grace provides this not by the works of our hand, but by grace. But you cannot connect to that grace except you connect through the conduit pipe of faith. Faith does not operate in possibilities. Faith, according to George Muller, he said, faith does not operate in possibilities. God is not glorified in the things that are humanly possible. God is not glorified in the things that are humanly impossible. Faith shows up where the power of man ends. Faith shows up where the power of man ends. I tell you a little about a man called George Muller. He was a great missionary in England, in Bristol particularly. While he was in school, he got convinced that he needed to be a missionary. And he told his dad that this is his calling. This is where God is calling him to. And this is what God is calling him to do. And his father was angry and said, no, I'm not going to take care of you again. I will not be responsible for you. And his father withdrew his sponsorship. George Muller went to God and said, God, I need you to provide for me. Few hours after he made that prayer to the Lord, his lecturer knocked at his door and said, we are giving you a tutoring job, which was not, which he never qualified for. He never expected. He never asked for we are giving you a tutoring job now in this school. While you are working as a student, we are a student here, you are schooling. And that provided the money for his school fees. He was able to run his school fees unhindered. After he continued with his calling as a missionary. After finishing from school, he saw a lot of children, orphans on the street of England. He was not comfortable in those days. You see a lot of orphans. A lot of orphans in the street, and they were used as workers. Workers. And he was so convinced that God has called him to do something about these young people, these orphans. And this man raised up in his lifetime over 10,000, 10,000 children. 10,000 children, and he had over five orphanage homes. He touched the lives of young people, brought them, raised them, fed them, took care of them, provided clothing for them, provided everything they needed. Every day he waited on God. He said it, and he said, the beginning of anxiety is where faith ends. The beginning of anxiety is where faith ends. The beginning of anxiety is where faith ends. And true faith begins where anxiety ends. True faith begins where anxiety ends. 
He was so convinced that God has called him, especially by the manifestation of God. After his father, he withdrew his sponsorship. And he continued his work. God was providing for him. Can you imagine feeding over 10,000 children without asking 10 kobo? Any nala from anybody, he never went to anybody to ask for money. He never went to anybody to ask for money, to raise up, to provide for his orphanage. He trusted God and believed God for provision. One day, one of his orphanages, they had the mother of the orphan, orphanage sent a message and said, we don't have food for these children. We don't have any food again. And he got there. He said, tell the children to sit in the dining hall. And he said, Father, thank you. You provided in the past. We thank you because you will do it again. We trust you for provision. No food in the orphanage. The children, he says, let them sit in the dining hall. They sat in the dining hall and he made that prayer. Few minutes after he made the prayer, somebody knocked at the door and he said, I am a baker. Yesterday night, the Lord woke me up and said, provide food for this orphanage. And I provide three batches of bread. Now, please allow me. Let me quickly go and get the bread and bring them here for you. Without asking, as this man went out of the hall, another man knocked at the door and said, I'm a meek man. I provide fresh meat. He was going out with his cart with fresh milk, loads of fresh milk and his cart broke down right in front. His cart broke down right in front of the orphanage. And he thought about it before I could fi I would fin finish fixing this cart, this milk, this fresh milk will get spoiled. And he went into the orphanage and said, Will your children need this milk? Will your children need this milk? They needed food. Somebody provided bread. Somebody provided milk. Without asking from one person. Faith connects you to God's provision of grace. Paul was writing the book of Galatians that we read. He said, I want to learn from you in verse 2 of Galatians chapter 3. Did you receive by the, the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did you receive the Spirit? Did you become born again by the works of the law? Was your life changed by the works of the law? Did you overcome that adultery by the works of the law? Did you overcome that fornication by the works of the law? Did you overcome that sin by the works of the law? Say, so let me know. If not by the hearing of faith, do you have you received the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of the faith? Look at verse 5 of that Galatians chapter. Galatians chapter 3. The one who supplies, therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you. He works miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of it? Friends, your provision, the same grace that saved you is the same grace that opens the door that you cannot open. The same grace that saves you can send help to you without asking for help. The same grace that saved you can heal you. The same grace that saves you can deliver you. The same grace that saved you can give you peace. Not by the works of the law, not by the works of your hand. He said, look at Abraham. He believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. We are sons of God. If we, we are sons of Abraham, if we also believe God. We can call ourselves children of Abraham. If we also believe him and trust him, we serve the God of all possibilities. We serve the awesome God, the God who is able to make a way where there seems to be no way, but you need a connector to that grace. You need a connector to that supply source. You need a connector to that storehouse of your provision. 
you need a connector. When you act according to God's word, when you take God by his word, which is faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Simply faith is taking God at his word. God said it, I believe it, and it is mine. God said it, I believe it, and it is mine. Faith is taking God at his word. He said it, and I believe it. I don't mind what is happening around me. I don't mind what people say, but I believe God said it. When you take God at his word, you commit God to act on your behalf. Whenever you take God at his word, you commit him to act on your behalf. Whenever you take God at his word, you commit him to act on your behalf. Even after the dead judge, Judge Mullah walked for 65 years, serving the Lord as missionary, he was a man known as a man of prayer, a man of faith, a man who knew to, how to draw the hand of God. He never asked a man, one man for help. He looked up to God and God never disappointed him. After his year, after his death, he was, his mission, his orphanages supplied food, provided needs for over 100,000 children. Over 100,000 orphanages, orphanages, children in orphanages. In his lifetime, it was 10,000. After his lifetime, it was over 100,000. Friends, I'd like you to know this morning that God is not a respecter of any man. All over the world, he's still looking for. The book of 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9 says, The eyes of the Lord move toward and fro the earth to show himself strong, mighty on the behalf of them whose hearts are loyal towards him. Those whose hearts are perfect towards him. God wants to reveal to you a greater dimension. There is power beyond the ordinary, the power of the ages to come, there is a power of possibility. God wants to take you to a higher dimension. God wants to change your status. God wants to change your story. God wants to change your situation. But you know what? You need the conduit pie of faith. Your provision cannot come to you unless you connect through faith. Your healing cannot come to you unless you connect through faith. Your deliverance cannot come to you unless you connect through faith. For Abraham believed God. It was counted unto him for righteousness. Anyone who believes this same way will be called children of Abraham. Even when his body was dead, he, I would say, he considered not the deadness of his body, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't consider it. He said, God said it. I've made you the father of many nations. They believe this word. He said, the God who giveth life to the dead, the God who calls the things that be not as though they were. He believed in God who gives life to the dead. God gives life to the dead. The God that calls the thing that be not as though they were. Even though he was nine, his, his wife was 99 years old. He was about 100 years old. His wife was about 90 years old. He was about 100 years old. And at that point, it was biological or theoretically possible for anyone to doubt. It was theoretically possible for anyone to doubt. It was theoretically possible for anyone to doubt, but this man refused to doubt. He said, God said it, and I believe it. God said it, I've made you the father of many nations before whom I have believed. I know he's the God that gives life to the dead. I know he's the God that caused the thing that be not as though they were. I believe him because he said it. So he decided, I'm not going to consider my own body. I'm not going to consider the impotence of my body. I will not consider the deadness of my wife's womb. I'm going to hold on to his word. The Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was full of praise. He was full of praise. Every day giving glory to God, thanking God ahead for the things he will do, thanking God for the things he did in the past. 
Thank you God for the things he is doing now. Thank you God for the future. Giving praise to God in advance. Hallelujah. The Bible said, being fully persuaded, he was too convinced that God was able to perform that which he has promised. He was too sure that God is not a disappointment. God has never been a failure. God is not a disappointment. He is able to bring to pass what he has said. Friends, the grace is there. Connect through the conduit pipe of faith. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Rise on your feet and lift up your hands to him. Say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Open your mouth and just pray. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe you. Tell the Lord, Lord, I believe. I believe you help my unbelief. Tell him I believe. Tell the Lord to, to quicken your faith in him. Quicken. I believe you for my healing. I believe you for my healing. I believe you for that miracle. I believe you. I believe you for that child. I believe you for that open door. I believe you, Jesus. There are thrones, there are kingdoms. Lord, I pray for your people here this morning. There's what we call the spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. It says we have received the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith comes to you when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. God puts in you the spirit of faith. Apparently, when you are here this morning, you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are not born again. You cannot have that spirit of faith. The Bible says by the works of flesh, no man can ever please God. No one can ever be justified by God. God. You want to say, Jesus, I receive you, that I may receive the spirit of faith this morning. You want to receive the spirit of faith. Lord, I give you my heart. Pastor, please pray with me. Can I pray with you wherever you are right now? Put your left hand on your chest. 
wherever you are across the globe right now, you want to say, Jesus, I give you my heart. Lord, I receive from you the spirit of faith. Put your left hand on your chest and I say this prayer after me. I'd like you to say this prayer after me. Lord, I give you my heart. And I ask you to forgive me all my sins. I ask you to write my name in the book of life. Make me your child from today. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and God raised him from the dead. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray with you wherever you are right now. As you put that left hand on your chest, please, can you lift up your right hand? Lift your right hand up. Thank you for lifting it up. Let it higher than your head. Thank you, my sister. I can see that hand. Lord, I pray for this once, and I'm asking that, Lord, today we mark a new beginning. That, Lord, you will give them a new heart. That, Lord, you will put your spirit within them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We sure hope you have been blessed by the teaching of the Word of God. Remember, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So, don't stop listening to the Word of God. For more messages from us, visit our website www.thf.org.ng You can also follow us on all our social media platforms at THF Church NG. Thank you.